I just got done talking about how companies are trying to fight back against AI crawlers that are causing all sorts of issues for infrastructures, including in open source, as both Linux and FOSS infrastructures are under attack by AI companies. This is becoming a significant problem, has impacted not only open source projects, but Linux and other public archives. Many articles like this are popping up. This one here talks about SourceHut, GNOMES, GitLab, and KDE's GitLab all having a common issue. And that common issue is that AI crawler bots are ignoring rules and targeting expensive server endpoints using deceptive methods. And they end up overwhelming the servers with redundant traffic and administrators are facing a lot of issues trying to fend off against these types of AI scrapers and crawlers. Over on Mastodon, one of the GNOME system admins, Bart Piotrisky, kindly shared some numbers to let people fully understand the scope of the problem. According to him, in around two and a half hours, they received 81,000 total requests. And out of those, only 3% passed the newbie's proof of work, hinting at 97% of the traffic being bots. That's an insane number. And it is an insane number. We're going to get into more of these projects and how they've been affected by effectively what are almost like DDoS attacks against their infrastructure and how it's proving to be a real big issue. We're also going to get into some of the community sentiment around all this, and we're going to talk about some big FOSS and Linux projects, including Fedora. So let's buckle in and get started as there's a lot to cover today. I'll make sure to post links in the description below. First off, thanks to OS News for this first article. And probably one of the best articles on this whole thing is from Libra.News called FOSS Infrastructure is Under Attack by AI Companies. LLM scrapers are taking down FOSS Projects infrastructure, and it's getting worse. By Nicolo here, it's a great read if you're interested in exactly what's happening with a ton of sources. Again, you'll find this one in the description below, but there's been more and more talk from the community about this specific article. FOSS Infrastructure is Under Attack by AI Companies, again from the Libra News. Referencing the same article, and there's a lot of people talking. So what is the overall community sentiment on this? And what kind of issues are these companies facing? Well, first off, the community sentiment here is, as you can imagine, very negative. Not only are the admins of the websites very frustrated about the scraping, but you can imagine how this is affecting people who are trying to use the website. As the server workloads get overwhelmed, well, that brings down a lot of false content. And the other frustration is just how hard it is to figure out whether or not something is a bot or a I scraper. This is not a simple task. And that's why companies like Cloudflare are trying to fight it back against this with none other than other AI bots, which is kind of hilarious. But I have another video on that previously that I did. You want to check that out if you want to see how some companies are trying to combat this. I'm not going to get super into the technical details there. I do it in the other videos. So you can check that out, of course. And there's also a huge growing resentment towards these AI companies and the industry as a whole. As people express irritation, as these well-funded AI companies are driving the demand for data scraping, and they are completely disregarding not only open source, but public resources. It's also hard because there's a little bit of mixed attitude with the FOSS principles. FOSS at the core wants to be as open as possible, but it also needs to protect itself against exploitation. So how do you balance the two by allowing everything to access your content for free, but at the same time, nothing is free. Their infrastructure costs a lot of money. So should the AI bots actually be able to crawl the website? And if so, how much? If you're enjoying this content, please take a moment to hit that like button for me and think about subscribing below. YouTube can get finicky and you wouldn't want to miss another video like this. Overall, the community is clearly frustrated by this resource intensive scraping. It'll be quite interesting to see how things work out, but let's get into some of the core issues that projects have been running into and what kind of costs that this has brought up. The first case here posted by Eric called AI crawlers need to be more respectful on read the docs. This is a great one because they go into how AI crawler abuse is causing them to have way more bandwidth charges and they break it down for us. For example, we have been seeing a number of bad crawlers over the last few months here are a couple illustrative examples of the abuse we're seeing. 73 terabytes in May 2024 from just one crawler. Can you imagine that? That one crawler downloaded 73 terabytes of zipped HTML files in May of 2024 with almost 10 terabytes in a single day. This cost us over $5,000 in bandwidth charges and we had to block the crawler. 
We emailed this company reporting a bug in their crawler and we're working with them on reimbursing us for the cost. That's an insane amount of bandwidth charge. And this is happening all over. And you can especially think of how this affects smaller companies, smaller open source projects that don't have the funding to actually cover charges like this. How about you imagine for just one day, you get a $5,000 charge. Can you cover that? Well, you can imagine lots of small open source projects cannot cover this cost. What's nice here is Read the Docs actually supplied this for us. And for those of you who don't know, Read the Docs is an open source platform that automates the building, versioning, and hosting of software documentation. It is a cool project, and I love the transparency here as they show us exactly the breakdown between what was about 10 days here from the 15th all the way out to the 31st or the 30th. We can just see the massive increase in what amount of total data transfer occurred during these days. At an average of around, well, we'll just say uh, around one terabyte, here we had peaks of seven, nine, and six and a half terabytes of data being transferred over. And you can imagine how much data they took if this was long running like it was over the continuously over the days. They're not the only people running into these types of bugs with crawlers, but in June 2024, another 10 terabytes were taken by Facebook's content downloader to download 10 terabytes of data, including zipped HTML and PDF files. Again, a massive uptick. Spanning only about three days this time, they took another massive hit of data. If we can assume the 70 terabytes was around $5,000, then we can assume that this cost them around $1,400 for the 10 terabytes. So what have they done in order to mitigate this stuff? Well, it's hard to mitigate. As the actions they had to take here at the read the docs, we have implemented IP-based rate limiting in the place for many of our endpoints. However, these crawlers are coming from a large number of IP addresses, so our rate limiting is not effective. These crawlers are using real user agents that identify them, which is a good thing. However, we can't simply rate limit all user agents on our platform. Because many real users use the same browsers with the same user agents, for example, and it says CDM providers, if you're reading this, there's an opportunity here. And it's funny because Cloudflare actually took this opportunity. Again, in my other video, I explain all this, but they are now fighting these crawlers with their own obfuscation method and trying to confuse these bots before they get way too deep into crawling a website. Anyways, we have taken a few actions to mitigate this. We have temporarily blocked all traffic from bots. As Cloudflare is identifying those AI crawlers, we have started also monitoring our bandwidth usage more closely. We have reconfigured our CDN to better cache these files. So Read the Docs is battling against the AI crawlers and bots, but so are others as GNOME is getting attacked as well. In what started as what was seemingly login problems for GitLab, hey, not sure if this is the right place to report, but the login for the GNOME GitLab has problems this morning and I have tested it myself and I got the same problem. You get a 500 error. We're sorry something went wrong on our end. And another person seeing the anime girl on GNOME GitLab. Recently, I've been seeing injected into various GNOME GitLab pages, the image of an anime girl, and it's something about Anubis, pretty wild. So what is Anubis? Well, we'll talk about that in one moment. But something funny that the user says is, is this some sort of an ongoing attack on the website? I also observe slower loading overall and failed loading on various GitLab components lately. Also, my girlfriend is gonna be mighty upset if she thinks I'm into this kind of thing. Pretty funny, but anyways, with that comedic relief, we get an answer from Sid. Anubis is a reverse proxy that uses proof of work challenge to block potential AI scrapers from hitting GNOME GitLab, which has caused significant downtime in the past. I think customizing the Anubis page for GNOME might be the idea worth exploring. And this leads back to the login problems for the GNOME GitLab. GNOME has been affected as they were likely getting hit by another wave of web scrapers for AI training, which is causing issues in the back end of the GitLab UI. It is a well-known issue across the board, another massive project getting affected by this. It is sad to see, as Drew from SourceHUD is also frustrated with all this, writing out a pretty intense blog about all these issues. SourceHUD is a suite of open source tools designed for software development with adherence to the Unix philosophies. It helps you by not tracking or advertising and ensuring user privacy. And Drew says here, this blog post is expressing personal experiences and opinions, and it does not reflect any official policies of SourceHut, but 
Here's what's been ailing them. Over the past few months, instead of working on our priorities at SourceHut, I've spent anywhere from 20 to 100% of my time in any given week mitigating hyper-aggressive LLM crawlers at scale. Again, another big example of what's happening with these AI crawlers causing outages, especially with this fairly large project. So Drew speaks on, now it's LLMs. If you think these crawlers respect robots.txt, then you are several assumptions of good faith removed from reality. These bots crawl everything they can find robots.txt be damned, including expensive endpoints like git blame, every page of every git log and every commit in every repo, and they do so using random user agents that overlap with end users and come from tens of thousands of IP addresses, mostly residential in unrelated subnets, each one making no more than one HTTP request over any time period we've tried to measure, actively and maliciously adapting and blending in with end user traffic and avoiding attempts to characterize their behavior or block the traffic. This is causing dozens of brief outages per week, and it's getting harder and harder to manage. Drew even goes to say, all of my system admin friends are dealing with the same problems. I was asking one of them for feedback on a draft of this article, and our discussion was interrupted to go deal with a new wave of LLM bots on their own server. Every time I sit down for beers or dinner or to socialize with my system admin friends, it's not going to be long before we're complaining about the bots and asking if the other has cracked the code to getting rid of them for once and for all. The desperation in these conversations is palpable. And it's wild because companies are developing these sophisticated AI crawlers for harvesting data on their larger language models. And they come up with these not only aggressive methods, but super sophisticated because they have basically endless money. In short, they have huge incentive to get this data. So their crawling tactics are just becoming more and more aggressive. As we're spending time trying to defend against this type of attack with Anubis, well, it's going to be a while before we actually get control of this as the attempt to block AI scrapers is getting really hard to do. Just to describe Anubis a little bit, here's what it does. Anubis decides to present a challenge using this logic. If a client has a user agent that does not contain Mozilla, the client is allowed through. If the client does have a cookie with, with a valid JWT token, the client is presented with a challenge. If the cookie ex is expired, the client is presented with a challenge. If the client is not selected for a secondary screening, the client is allowed through. If the client is selected for a secondary screening, server reevaluates the proof of work and allows the client through if everything checks out. And here's a flow chart on how that exactly works. But some people are experiencing CPU usage while going through this challenge. Why? Well, when you get requested to solve a challenge, an HTML page is served. It references JavaScript code that is loaded into an ES6 module. The server is asked for a challenge and the client goes ham, making a SHA 256 hash of the challenge and announce until the hash has a certain number of leading zeros. This is the proof of work challenge. The client then sends the answer to the server and the server validates the answer. If the answer is correct, the server signs a JWT token and sends it back to the client in an HTTP cookie. The client then sends this cookie with every request to the server. Basically, to simplify this, the server sends you a puzzle, the browser solves the puzzle that might use some extensive resources from your end. The browser then sends that answer back. If it's the right answer, the server checks and approves it. Otherwise, you are a bot. LWN has also experienced issues from this. Should you be wondering why LWN is occasionally sluggish? Since the new year, the DDoS onslaughts from AI scraper bots has picked up considerably. Only a fraction of our traffic is serving actual human readers at this point, which is just crazy. At times, some bot decides to hit us from hundreds of IP addresses at once, clogging the works. They don't identify themselves as bots, and the robots.txt is the only thing they don't read off the website. This is beyond unsustainable. We are going to have to put time into developing some sort of active defense just to keep the site online. I think I'd even rather be writing about accounting systems than dealing with this crap. And it's not just us. Of course, this behavior is going to wreck the net even more than it's already wrecked. Happy New Year. A great post by Jonathan here from LWN, which is a network covering free and open source development since 1998. Neil Goompa also from Fedora. Infrastructure has been under attack. Services have been regularly down for weeks because of AI scrapers. I'm so frustrated. Just case after case of crawlers hitting all sorts of projects as some people calling this a global abuse trend. Earl here showing that crawlers hitting Forge Joe instances also causing disruption and issues for users. More and more websites and blogs are writing about this. The community is not happy as we remain under attack by AI companies 
and projects. I think it may be time to spread the word a little bit, share this with somebody so they understand what open source and Linux and other projects and infrastructures are actually going through. Also, special thanks to Sluxbury on Discord for bringing some of this to my attention. And if you made it to the end of the video, you're a true fan, make sure to subscribe below. Don't forget to smash that like button for me. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.